Hi everyone and welcome back to Attention. I'm Pei. This is the second video on the short story by Borges, uh, The Library of Babel. In the last video, I gave an analysis discussing the epistemological implications, its relevance to the real world, and if it is possible to know what it is we believe we know. So if you're interested in that, I will provide a link to that video in the description below. Today we'll be doing something a little different, and we'll actually take a look at the books in the library, and examine their relationship with a few separate aspects, and we'll ask the question, despite there being a finite amount of books, could the library still be infinite? Actually, kind of. Eh, kind of. The first thing we'll look at is a single sentence found closer to the end of the story that could have had a lot more said on the subject, but seems to be thrown out there, almost out of place. That sentence, to speak is to fall into tautology. A tautology is a statement that essentially says the same thing twice. It is what it is, or unmarried bachelors. The word unmarried being defined in the word bachelor. Since the library itself has within it everything that could possibly be said using language, to speak anything would be to say something already written in the library. Now if we take this sentence alongside the opening sentence of the story that states that the library is the universe, essentially what is being stated is all invention is simply discovery. Yeah, that, uh, that might need to be explained a little more. If something such as time travel is possible, the mechanics, uh, be it mathematics or otherwise, is already written somewhere in this library. All artistic endeavors have already been described in great detail, including every piece of music, every conversation ever had, or every conversation that has yet to be can be found in this library. Everything I'm saying right now, including this, and this, and this, is already in print. Now, this seems like an obvious statement, and maybe it would be in such a library, but what does this mean in terms of invention? As I'm sure many of you who have already clicked on this video already know that the Library of Babel does in fact exist. There is a website set up in such a, such a way, and on this website you can go through as many pages of as many books looking for something that resembles some kind of sense. This means that somewhere within this online library, every possible cure for every disease is somewhere in there. If it's possible to write a novel more accomplished than the Brothers Karamazov, it as well is already there. The thing is, this doesn't change anything. One could just as well argue the moment a complete language was developed, this uh, idea, one way or another, immediately existed. With a dictionary and dice, anyone could generate nonsense in hopes of accidentally coming across a masterpiece. One could say that invention is not just taking existing elements and rearranging them in an order that could produce a new discovery, but also has to be accompanied with its application to everyday life. The problem is, this application too is also written in detail, and therefore also only discovered upon realization. What it comes down to is thought. If one were to accidentally come across a novel that had potential to alter social norms and would later be widely recognized as a classic, would the one who came across it be equally recognized as the work itself? Probably not. Now, this could be argued as many discoveries today, the one who discovered it is uh, very well known. But these discoveries are ones that would typically require a specific skill set in discovering in the first place. Dostoevsky's name is widely recognized because we also recognize an achievement that was not accidental. If one were to randomly come across a novel that would be regarded as something on the level of the Brothers Karamazov, the accomplishment 
achievement is not in the work itself, but in the coincidence of that individual pulling the book from the shelf, which is not a feat in any way outside of luck. Whereas the writing of any novel is not luck, but dedication and skill not everyone is capable of achieving. So though it is true in this fictional universe that to speak is a tautology, the same could be said for today's society. And what actually matters is the way in which invention and discovery is in association with the individual. If it is produced independently of mind, or with an ability that is acquired by the few. The narrator of the story does question the size of the library despite them knowing or or at least uh, believing there is a finite number of books. Now there are many reasons for this that are suggested in the story itself, but there is one other reason that is not mentioned in the story that shows how, or at least in a particular way, that this library is actually infinite. Because the books are 410 pages long, could the library contain everything that is written if, say, one is spelling out numbers? What happens after the number that takes up every page to spell out? There could be nothing after, while a higher number does still exist. Now you might say the obvious, if anything in this story can be obvious, the spelling of a higher number just continues in another book. However, there is another problem. To do this, you would eventually run into books that do repeat. In fact, infinitely so. But as the fundamental law of the library states, there are no two books alike. Now, that might sound right, but that's actually not necessarily true either. Because what it would come down to is just matching the book with the one that's already in existence. And the one that exists may be attached to multiple books in which it would then connect with. There, there has to be easier ways to say this. What I mean is, is uh, you would actually be able to just use the same book an infinite number of times to spell out an infinite number of numbers. Yeah, that, that definitely, definitely sounded better. It just comes down to rearranging what uh, has already been spelt out. Eventually, you just uh, use uh, one of the books twice to spell out the single full number and so on and so on. Uh, again, it's not really any different than the alphabet we have now. I mean, it's sim a similar method. Our alphabet is, 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 can spell out an infinite amount of numbers. It's actually very simple. Uh, yeah, I guess, that, I guess that makes sense. But there still seems to be something wrong with that. And really, it is actually much simpler than that. Since no two books are alike, to spell out an infinite amount of numbers, you would only need 10 books in which you could rearrange repeatedly for an infinite amount of time. Those 10 books being one that spell out 0, 0.000 and so on until the last page, 1.000 and all the way up until you get to the 10th book spelling out 9.0. And of course this doesn't include decimals, but the same method would apply. But even with this, there's still one thing that would need to change. And that is the spelling out of the number, say 5.0, would also have to stand in for the symbol that represents 5. Otherwise you would have to go on search for the book that spells out 15 and so on for literally every number. And then we're just back to the first explanation given in which every number would have to be spelt out, and though it would take much more time, once again the same method would apply, eventually coming to a number so large that a full 410 pages would have to be used more than once. But what is the point in me saying all this? Well, in such a way, at least linguistically, or better yet, when dealing with information, the library is in fact infinite. Something infinite can and does exist in the finite. There are a finite number of books that, if rearranged in search of a number plus one, contain an infinite amount of information. That would be the most tedious job in, in, the, in the universe, having to just rearrange those 10 books repeatedly. I mean, by the time you would get to, to, to uh, 55 
octillions, 55 septillion, 555, and, and, and so on, you would, you would do what? Drop the same book down 29 times, yeah. It's, it's just a thought experiment. No one, no one is actually doing this. The point is, if one wants to define the library as a universe of information, it then does become infinite. The infinite is just confined within the finite amount of books. In such a way, the library has more in common with our own universe than originally thought. Can a finite universe expand infinitely? That does correspond with the flat universe theory. Flat being a uh, two-dimensional analogy in which the universe has a finite volume but an infinite future. Now, can we prove that this is the case? Well, hold up, this video is getting long. I don't think we have time to get into that. So I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna end it here because this could, this, this, this could go on in, infinitely.